You see, you've looked everywhere on this map, have you, Posty? All over, Bishop. <laughs> Where are my feet out looking at it? You didn't see a riddling tree anywhere? Not apart from the one in your garden. Uh, did you try looking over there? Look. Oh, get off! Oh, uh, sorry. What did you want to go do that for? It was an accident, Posty. Eh? Now where was I? Oh yes. Did you try looking? Did you try looking over there? Where? Over there. Where? Over there. Look up. Oh, oh God. sorry, Posty. I wish you'd stop doing that. It's not my fault, Posty. It's this map. It keeps on wanting to curl up. You having problems? Help. Human folk are coming. I'm off. Stick down there. Look! There, there, leave me alone! Oh, oh no. dear, Mossop. Come here. here. Oh, I'll give you a hand. Oh, thank you, Marjorie. Oh, trickiest map you ever did meet, that one is. You need something to hold this down. Yes. Here we are. Ah. ah, is it a map of the countryside round here? Uh, yes, it is, Marjorie. I drew it all myself, I did. Well, that's very good, Mossop. What's it for? Well, Posty here. Oh, it's gone, has he? Mm. Well, Posty has been looking around all the places on this here map to try and find a riddling tree. Why? Can't you guess? No. Well, it won't be long before you're a riddler, will it? No, but what's that got to do with Posty looking for a riddling tree? I should have thought that was obvious. When you become a full riddler, you'll have to find a garden of your own to live in. A garden with a riddling tree. But there's a riddling tree here. Why can't you live in this garden? Because two full riddlers can't live in the same garden, Mr Grimley. That's riddler law, that is. Does that mean that Tiddle will have to leave Riddleton End? That's exactly what that does mean, yes, Marjorie. Oh, Tiddler. He's right, Marjorie. I was so excited at the thought of becoming a riddler that I'd forgotten about that. Oh, cheer up, Tiddler. Oh. It's not the end of the world, you know. Oh, but I don't want to leave Erdleton End. Well, try and look on the bright side. Perhaps you'll fail your final tests, and then you won't become a full Riddler after all. But I want to become a Riddler. All right, all right, all right. Don't snap my head off. Here, this'll take your mind off it. Here, let's have an Aesop's foible, then you can work out the moral of that. That should keep you occupied and stop your moping. Aesop, Aesop, tell us a story, do. There was once a tiddler whose job it was to look after a flock of goats. She was up on the mountainside with them one evening when suddenly it started to snow. So she and the goats took shelter in a cave. But although it was a very large, very dry and very warm cave, it certainly wasn't a very empty cave. For milling around at the back, bleating away merrily to each other, was a large flock of wild goats who were also sheltering from the snow. Hey, yup, thought the little tiddler. If I could get these goats to join my flock, just think of all the milk I'd get from them and all the cheese I'd be able to make too. I'd be a rich tiddler, the tiddler with the largest flock of goats in the whole wide world. So she took the food that she'd brought for her own animals and gave it to the wild goats. If you join my flock, she said, you'll have food like this every day. And you won't have to forage round on the mountainside anymore. Just think what a wonderful life you'll have. The wild goats did think about it as they ate the food that she gave them. But to be honest, they didn't seem very impressed. The tiddler's own goats weren't impressed either. That's our food you've given away, they grumbled. What are we supposed to eat? Oh, do be quiet, you ungrateful things snapped the tiddler. You're safe and warm and dry in here, aren't you? What more do you want? A bit of supper wouldn't go amiss, said one big nanny goat. But the tiddler just ignored her and settled down to sleep. The next morning, when she awoke, the cave was completely empty. The wild goats had left at the crack of dawn to climb to the feeding grounds further up the mountain. And the tiddler's own goats had decided to follow them. Come back, come back, cried the tiddler as she ran out of the cave. Don't leave me, I can't go home without you. What would family say? One big old billy goat turned and looked at her. If you need a flock of goats to take her home with you, he said, I suggest you go and look for the wild goats. After all, you seem to think more of them than you do the rest of us. And with that, 
he turned and trotted after the rest of the flock to the feeding grounds high up on the mountain. Ah, now then, Tiddler, what did you learn from that, eh? Um, not to be too greedy, to be satisfied with what you've got. Yes, but that's not the moral old Aesop was trying to teach us. Well, then, perhaps it's to do with not turning against your old friends when you make new ones. That's it, Tiddler. That's the moral, all right. And I hope you won't forget your old friends when you move away from Riddleton End. Of course I won't. <laughs> but I wish I didn't have to leave. Well, don't get upset about it. I'm doing my best to find a riddling tree nearby so you don't have to move far away. Have you had any luck, Mossop? Well, not as yet. No, Posty's been keeping his eyes open while he's been on his rounds, but he hasn't spotted one so far. See, I'm not sure he will, because hedgehogs are very small and it's very difficult to see things when you're that close to the ground. Now, if you want to see something or find something, it's best to look from high up. Hmm. High up. High up. Hmm. You've just given me the most wonderful idea you have, Mr Grimley. Oh, have I? Yes, you have. Hey, tell me, Marjorie, have you still got any of them special floaty balloons you had? You know, the ones that had me floating off up into the air when I took hold of the end? Well, yes, I think there's some still in the greenhouse. Good. Uh, and, Mr Grimley, have you got a large box or a basket over in your garden? Well, I expect so. Excellent. Then you can help me with my plan, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all, but what exactly is this plan of yours? I'll explain while we're finding out that their box. I hope he isn't planning to go floating off with those balloons. It was quite a job rescuing him the last time. <laughs> he did look funny, though, didn't he? Sailing through the air. Hmm. Oh, Tiddler, you are down in the dumps, aren't you? Do you think a glass of lemonade might cheer you up? I don't know. Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? Come on. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, Tiddler, what's the matter with you? You will? Hello, Midler. No, she's just a bit sad, that's all. We're going into the house to have some lemonade. Would you like some? Certainly I would. Ho, ho! I thought you'd be really happy these days. You're going to be a Riddler soon, aren't you? Yes, but when I am, I'm going to have to leave Riddleton End. So? So that'll mean leaving all my friends behind. Well, you can still come and see us sometimes, can't you? Or we can come and see you. I suppose so. Oh, I wish I were going to be made up to a full Riddler. It must be nice to be grown up and be able to do what you want instead of having people telling you what to do all the time. Well, it is exciting, really, Tiddler. I remember when I left home and went to college, I was quite thrilled going off on my own to make my way in the world. I felt ever so grown up. But weren't you sad to be leaving your friends and family? Well, of course I was. But I just told myself this. Everybody leaves the nest at some time. There comes a time when every bird must fly. No use sighing, making it a glum time. You simply have to smile and say goodbye. It's always hard to leave your friends behind you. The parting of the ways may make you cry. But that's not how you want your friends to find you. You simply have to smile and say goodbye. Look on leaving as a new beginning. The chance to make new friends, new things to try. Face the future boldly and you're winning. Don't look back, just smile and say goodbye. Just think of that, eh? New beginnings, making new friends. It's got to be really exciting. Yes, I suppose it is. I'm still going to miss you all, though. Oh, I'm going to miss you too, Tiddler. But in a way, I'm quite glad you're going. Oh, what's that? Well, Mossop will be able to take me on as his Tiddler then, won't he? Ha! I think I'll go and ask him now. Where is he? 
Oh, he's gone off working on one of his ideas. Something to do with the blooms, I think. Are you ready, Mossop? Ready as I'll ever be, Mr Grimley. Throw up the riddle stone, then. Right. Ah! Hold on tight, Mr Grimley. I will. We don't want you floating away. What's going on out here? Is that Mossop up there? It certainly is, Miss Dor. If there's a riddling tree in these parts, he should be able to see it from up there. Ahoy down there, Madre! What do you think of this then, eh? Wonderful, Mossop! How's he going to get down? Oh, that's easy, Miss Dor. You see, he's got a pin up there with him, and when he wants to come down, all he's got to do is pop all the balloons one by one, and then he'll float gently down, and I'll help him by pulling on this rope. Well, I hope it works all right. Any sign of a riddling tree? <sighs> no, I'm afraid not, Marjorie. Not a riddling tree to be seen, there isn't. <sighs> You'd best pull me down, Mr Grimley. All right, Mossa, pop the balloons. Right job. Not all at once. <laughs> Are you all right, Mr Grimley? <laughs> Mossa? Oh. Oh. Oh, by heck, that was what you might call a rapid descent. Uh, you OK, Mr Grimley? Yes! Oof, just a bit winded, that's all. Ah, but it was a brilliant idea of mine, wasn't it? Oh, yes. With ideas like that, I should have no trouble becoming a mossy boots. Hmm. That's the highest form of Riddler, you know, Mr Grimley. Yes, when Tiddler leaves, I shall study to become a mossy boots. <laughs> you mean you won't be taking on another Tiddler? That's what I do mean, Midler. Uh, why? Oh... No reason. Midler had hoped that you'd take him on as your tiddler and train him, Mossop. Oh, uh, oh, well, that's a shame. <sighs> but it can't be helped. He's not the only one who's got to be disappointed. No. If there isn't a riddling tree around here, I'm going to have to move a long way away, aren't I? Oh. Hey, everybody! Come and look at this! What is it? Look! Wait, it's a plant. What's so special about that? The garden's full of them. But this isn't any old plant, Mr Grimley. This is a little riddling tree. Your riddling tree must have dropped a seed, Marjorie, and it's begun to grow. Well, well, well. A baby riddling tree. Well, what I say is, it's a shame it's not growing in somebody else's garden, because then Tiddler could move in there when she became a riddler. Hmm. But don't you see? We could dig this up. And then we could plant it in Mr Grimley's garden. And then Tiddler can move in there. Could I? Yes, of course. And then you wouldn't have to move away. That's brilliant, young Midler. Just the sort of idea I might have had myself. Thank you, Midler. Oh, I've had a wonderful idea myself. When I do become a Riddler, I'll be allowed to take on a Tiddler of my own to train. I could take you on, if you like. If I like? Oh, that will be just wonderful! Yahoo! <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs>